Hello. I welcome the opportunity to speak to you this morning at the annual Nuri and Dundalk Chambers Cross-Border Conference. My thanks to the Nuri Chamber and Dundalk Chamber for the kind invitation and also to the conference sponsors, Nuri Moran and Down District Council, Louth County Council, Intertrade Ireland and Louth Local Enterprise Office. I was a regular visitor to Louth, Nuri, South Down and South Armagh before the pandemic and look forward to getting back to the region when we are through this. The past year has been one of unprecedented challenge for everyone on this island, and in particular for business, as we grapple with the COVID-19 pandemic and the outworkings of Brexit. As we move into the recovery phase, it is clear that our economy will face multiple challenges. Work on our new national economic recovery plan to reboot the economy in the aftermath of the pandemic is at an advanced stage of development within government. This will set the direction of travel for our economy, ensuring that the short-term responses to COVID-19 and Brexit are consistent with our longer-term goals. There will be permanent changes in our labour market, as well as structural shifts in certain sectors, an accelerated trend towards e-commerce, significant changes to working patterns, and a potential mismatch between the skill set and the needs of firms, at least in the short term. In addition, the longer term challenges in our, in our economy and society remain. Indeed, progress in some has been accelerated by the pandemic, such as decarbonisation and digitalisation. Taking advantage of the opportunities offered by the all-island economy will be vital in driving our recovery. I am therefore very encouraged that you have chosen a very positive and constructive theme for your conference, with a focus on opportunities for growth through cooperation as we look to the future. I'm conscious that when I address this audience in particular, I am talking to people and business owners who have a deep understanding of the issues surrounding Brexit and who are in many ways on the front line. As you will know, the Protocol on Ireland, Northern Ireland, plays a vital role in protecting the Good Friday Agreement and the gains of the peace process. It is designed to avoid a hard border on the island of Ireland, to protect vital all-island supply chains and to ensure the integrity of the single market and Ireland's place in it. There are real opportunities for Northern Ireland in its implementation, with access to Great Britain, but also to 450 million European Union consumers. This access is unique and vital for all-island supply chains. For citizens and businesses, North and South, adapting to the changes brought about by the protocol is undoubtedly a challenge. We recognise this. We and our EU partners will continue to listen carefully to the concerns of businesses. The EU and UK are going to need to continue to work together as we all adjust to the new trading circumstances. Every effort will need to be made within the framework of the protocol to meet and resolve challenges. It is in all our, of our interests to make it work as well as possible. Over the coming period, it will be important for businesses to be supported to make the most of the very real and unique opportunities that the protocol offers, including the opportunities that can come from the market access to the UK and the EU, which has been maintained for Northern Ireland. However, I recognise that for businesses across the island of Ireland, adapting to the changes brought about by Brexit continues to bring challenges. I commend the resilience, the entrepreneurship, the foresight and the planning carried out by so many businesses in preparation for Brexit, even in the face of the COVID pandemic, which has had such a seismic impact on us all over the past year. But I also recognise that, in some cases, no amount of preparation can offset the impacts of Brexit. So I, I will continue to listen carefully to concerns raised by businesses and communities across the island, in particular those working and living in the border region, as we continue to work through this period of adaptation. The building and strengthening of business and commerce between North and South has been a story of undoubted success and positivity and continues to deliver an enormous benefit to both parts of our island. We have seen cross-border trade grow steadily over the past 20 years and it is now valued at over 7 billion per annum. This growth has happened due to the conditions brought about through peace and stability 
and an invisible border for goods, services, labour and finance. We have a good story to tell about doing business on this island, the benefits of the all-island economy and the current and potential future business opportunities on the island. A good part of that success has been underpinned and driven by the work of Intertrade Ireland in assisting over 42,000 businesses right across the island to explore cross-border markets, to develop new products, processes and services and to become investor ready, as well as supporting the creation of 16,000 jobs and generating more than 1.3 billion in business development value. The government is determined to ensure that Intertrade Ireland is equipped with the funding it requires to continue this important work. And we have steadily increased our contribution to the body in recent years to ensure that it has the resources it needs to support SMEs. In January 2020, the Irish and British governments and the five main parties in Northern Ireland accepted the New Decade New Approach Agreement as the basis for them to reform the Northern Ireland Executive. This was a very significant shared achievement by the parties in Northern Ireland and by the British and Irish governments, restoring the power-sharing institutions of the Good Friday Agreement to operation. In the context of the NDNA Agreement, there were specific commitments by the Irish government in support of greater cooperation, connectivity and opportunity north-south on the island, working in partnership with the Northern Ireland Executive and the British government. These commitments are also set out in our programme for government, thus ensuring that their delivery is at the heart of the work of this government. Specifically, the Narrow Water Bridge continues to be a key priority. The government has rec recommitted to the funding of 75 million euro over the next three years for the A5 project. We've agreed the launch of restoration work on phase two of the Ulster Canal project, including with the support of six million from the Shared Island Fund. Work on a strategic review of the rail network on the island of Ireland is advancing. We are developing proposals for an enhanced North-South programme of research and innovation. We are building on our commitment to investment in Northwest and border communities including further support for the Northwest Strategic Growth Partnership, the Expanded Reconciliation Fund of the Department of Foreign Affairs, the International Fund for Ireland and the new Peace Plus programme for Northern Ireland and the border counties will provide critical funding for work on peace and reconciliation. I recognise the key importance of the Narrow Water Bridge project to this region, not just in terms of connectivity, important as, as, as that is, but to fully realise and unleash the economic and tourism potential of the Morans and Cooley region. This project can be seen in the context of a wider package for the development of the region, including the vital Nuri Southern Relief Road. Together, these key infrastructure projects will deliver complementary economic development objectives for the region. The Narrow Water Project is a priority for the government and we are committed to working with the Northern Ireland Executive to deliver this vital infrastructure for the region. I also want to acknowledge the strong leadership of Norrie Moran and Down District Council and Loud County Council, who are working together in partnership through their Memorandum of Understanding to stimulate cross-border regional development. I look forward to seeing this partnership widen and deepen into the future. Similarly, I see the Dublin-Belfast Economic Corridor Network as an important initiative with a lot of potential for the Nori Dundalk region. As business people, I know that you appreciate fully the benefits of trading and cooperating on a cross-border basis. Whether it is a bigger market for your goods or services, a broader pool of talent for recruitment, or a partner for innovating or expanding in your sector, the reasons to think island in business and in our economy are many. The government's shared island initiative has a similar positive and practical focus and is about being more ambitious about what we can achieve together on the island through the framework of the Good Friday Agreement. It is about addressing the issues that matter most to people, to enhance economic opportunity and to deepen our societal connections. This is an agenda with which everyone on the island can engage with confidence. It does not diminish or compromise anyone's identity or beliefs. It is about pursuing the goals of the Good Friday Agreement to improve the lived experience for everyone on the island, to deepen mutual understanding between communities and to strive in practical ways for reconciliation. Central to the government's approach 
is working with the executive and with the British government on the major challenges that we face together on the island. Recovery from the pandemic, addressing the climate and biodiversity crisis, and working through the consequences of Brexit. We can achieve far more on these issues together than we can separately. In October, the government announced a shared island fund with 500 million in capital funding being made available from this year through to 2025, ring fence for collaborative north-south investment. The Shared Island Fund confirms our readiness and ambition to invest significantly in our shared future on the island. We want to develop and deliver a new generation of cross-border investments, for instance, on enhancing rail connectivity, a north-south research and innovation programme, and on transition to a carbon-neutral future. Through the Shared Island Fund, we will make investments together with the Executive and the United Kingdom Government that will contribute to these goals and show what more we can achieve through the framework of the Good Friday Agreement. As part of the initiative, the Shared Island Unit is commissioning a comprehensive programme of research across a range of policy areas. This research will be published through this year and next to inform and stimulate discussions on how best we can enhance our cooperation and connections on the island and thinking both north-south and east-west. I've also launched a Shared Island Dialogue series to hear from civil society stakeholders across all communities and traditions on key issues for our shared future on the island. Through the Shared Island Dialogues, we are seeking as broad a range of perspective and experience as possible and the inclusion of voices that have not always been adequately represented in the peace process. I hope that many of you joining today's conference will also participate in the Shared Island Dialogues on issues that are of most concern for you. The Shared Island Initiative is focused on ensuring that we take up that goodwill and work with practical and meaningful actions for a shared and prosperous future for all, underpinned by the Good Friday Agreement. I know that in the local governments of Louth and Nori, Morn and Down, and in the Nuri and Dundalk Chambers, I will have a positive and constructive partner in this work. Finally, I do not underestimate the many challenges ahead as we adapt to the new reality of doing business on this island in the post-Brexit environment. And be assured that the government will continue to support you in navigating this. I would strongly encourage you all to continue the excellent work you are doing to deepen cross-border links and to fully take advantage of the unique opportunities of our all-island economy. I wish you well in your deliberations today, and I look forward to seeing you in Nuri and Dundalk in the not-too-distant future.